Chapter 51 Celebratory Dinner You are listening to the novel at fametv.com. Chapter 51 Celebratory Dinner After all our showers, we all piled into the kid's car. Mr. Atkins drove, with Mrs. Atkins next to him in the passenger seat. Zeke sat between the twins in the middle row, emitting such a scary aura that the twins didn't say a word on the way to dinner. Me and Noah sat in the very back which is normally used for storage apparently. Noah looked squished, but I felt quite comfortable. The Atkins took me to a place called Da Vinci's, an Italian restaurant by the looks of the menu. We were able to sit at a round table that fit us perfectly. After ordering water and pasta for everyone, Mr. Atkins got down to business. You want to tell us your side of the story, Zeke? His dad asked, not sounding overbearing, just average like how you would ask someone how their day was. Zeke straightened up more so than he already was. At lunch. At lunch. Mrs. Atkins interrupted. She looked around the table. What happened at lunch? Zeke eyebrows pulled together. What were you asking about then? Let's start with what you have to say about lunch. Mr. Atkins looked concerned. I'm not exactly sure. We all ate lunch together outside. Jake acted a bit strange like I scared him. Zeke stayed plainly. How? Mr. Atkins asked the same time Mrs. Atkins asked, what did you do? Dave smiled broadly. I'll tell you what he did. He slapped me upside the head for no good reason and that was when Jake started to avoid eye contact. Wrong. He slapped you for antagonizing Noah with cookies. Kyle corrected. Dave stuck out his tongue. Mrs. Atkins looked at me sympathetically. They're just messing around, Jake. There's no reason to be afraid. Mr. Atkins sighed. I think we should address this now. Boys, Jake has a severe aversion to violence. His birth family wasn't very kind. Actually, he ended up in the hospital for a few months and just recently started to get better. He eyed seek. So I would prefer if he didn't run extra laps. I'll be calling your coach to talk about easing him in. I don't want him to aggravate any old injuries. All the boys looked at me making me feel like I was a freak show. I studied the table, keeping my head down. I'll keep an eye out for him. Noah spoke first. As my only younger brother, I'll make sure no one picks on him. Especially these three monsters. I cracked a smile. Hey. I'm not scary at all compared to Dave and Zeke. Kyle said. Looking at me, he faked a sad face. I'm the second least scary one here, right Jake? I gave a simple nod. Wait. That's not fair. Dave cut in. Who's the third least scary one then? Me or Zeke? I pointed at Mr. Atkins without even thinking. I haven't been around him much, yet he made me feel safe by how easy he could control the boys. What? You're less scared of some man who is over a foot and a half taller than you. Dave rolled his eyes. Fine. Who do you think is the scariest one here? Just so we know what makes you so nervous all the time. Unconsciously, I glanced at Mrs. Atkins. It was nothing against her specifically, but the fact that she was a mother. I wonder if motherhood made my mom into the monster she had become. Mom. You're afraid of mom. Dave hollered, and starting laughing. Even Kyle and Noah started to chuckle. I looked back at the table in embarrassment. I should have just pointed at Zeke. He wasn't really scary, just intimidating. Boys. Mrs. Atkins tried to calm them. Jake, it's okay. I understand why you feel that way. Don't worry, I'm not bothered by it. I glanced at her, and she was smiling. But not in the creepy, mean way my mom would before hitting me. Jake's recent hospital stay was his mom's doing. She told the boys. All laughing ceased. The quiet this time around was even more deafening. Noah was the only one that didn't look shocked. She wasn't a real mom like you mom. He nudged me. You'll learn to like her. She makes good cookies so that's a plus. 
I nodded in agreement. That was a very true statement. And my mom and never cooked for me before, so that difference helped. Mrs. Atkins laughed. I'm happy to know that I'm only good for cookies. And for bailing us out of trouble. Noah added. The whole table laughed and started to lighten up once more. The conversation changed to stories of the boys getting in trouble all over town and in school. I happily ate my food as I listened to them talk about the past. This is what a family should be like. Chapter 52 O'Connors You are listening to the novel at FameTV.com Chapter 52 O'Connors at Dinner Noah reminded his dad that they needed to stop at O'Connors after dinner to get me some equipment. Right after, the twins jumped in and said they needed stuff as well so the whole family decided to go. I vaguely remember Noah mentioning O'Connors before as a sports store or something. But when we got there, I realized it was so much more. There was daily athletic wear, specific practice clothes, cleats and equipment for all kinds of sports. Mrs. Atkins went to look at their regular clothes for women. Zeke didn't say where he was going. Then the twins ran off claiming they wanted to look at cleats. Noah and Mr. Atkins stuck with me and started with looking at baseball pants. Mr. Atkins was quick to pick the right sizes and throw them in the cart. We passed some baseball t dot shirts and he grabbed a few of those as well. Anything you like in particular, just go ahead and throw it in the cart. He told me as he picked up some long socks. I looked at Noah and mumbled, alcohol. Mr. Atkins froze. Noah nodded. Yeah, Dad. We need alcohol for his bat to keep it clean. And maybe some other piece of wood to keep the dents out of his bat. Mr. Atkins sighed with relief. Oh. You guys mean rubbing alcohol. You had me worried for a second there. He patted his chest. I thought my heart almost stopped. I looked curiously at Noah. Noah grinned. He thought we wanted real alcohol. To drink. I shook my head immediately. Alcohol made my mom really crazy sometimes. Or it would make her pass out and then extra angry when she woke up. I didn't want anything to do with that crap. No need to be so adamant. Mr. Atkins gave me a light smile. So tell me about your wooden bat. Do you like it? I nodded. Very much. Is it harder to hit the baseball? No way, Dad. He still hits it perfectly. Noah answered. But I disagreed and nodded. They both looked at me. I cleared my throat and coughed out. Doesn't go as far. Wow. Four words. Noah nodded at his dad. You've almost been elevated to my status. How many words do you get? He asked his son. Quite a few a day. Noah shrugged, like it was no biggie. Especially when he doesn't understand something. Like what? Well today we were discussing Garrett's cutter so I had to explain what a cut fastball was. We also talked about playing second and short together. Sometimes I get a word or two. Or a nod. Or a shake of the head. Mr. Atkins laughed. You must be the one he trusts the most. Is that true? Noah looked me in the eye. I turned red and gave a quick nod, then turned away to go look at something else. Noah caught up to me real quick and threw an arm around my shoulders. Ah. I'm honored, Jake. I'll be your translator and interpreter until you're ready to talk to everyone else. I could hear Mr. Atkins chuckling behind us, probably amused. Noah led me towards the baseball equipment area and started to point out some expensive cleats and gloves. I felt uncomfortable with the thought of the Atkins spending so much money on me. The clothes were already enough. Plus the bat was really costly. I don't think Mr. Duncan check from the state would cover all of this. If you need it, grab it. Mr. Atkins told me. I shook my head. I really didn't need it. In fact, I don't even want it. You can't just keep using my old cleats. And your glove looks really worn. What if they tear or break? Noah scrunched up nose. 
I looked at Mr. Atkins and shook my head so he would know I was okay with what I had. Maybe Jake likes what he's using. He told Noah. Your old cleats are worn in so they probably don't give him blisters. And maybe his glove is broken in perfectly for his fielding. Noah sighed. Okay. That makes sense. Moving on. They dragged me all throughout the store to look at anything I might need. We grabbed alcohol and a piece of wood for my bat. Finally after an hour of torture, the whole family met up at the front of the store to check out. Everyone had grabbed something, even quiet Zeke. The total was in the hundreds and make me sick to my stomach. But Mr. and Mrs. Atkins didn't even blink. They just paid and passed out the bags for us to carry. Chapter 53 Trainer 1 You are listening to the novel at fametv.com. Chapter 53 Trainer 1 The next day we followed the same routine for the morning. Noah helped me pack my own baseball bag with all my gear and my baseball hat that Dave gave me. Apparently it was the school baseball hat that went with the game uniforms. I felt touched at the thought. I'm officially on a team. We ate breakfast, packed up the car, and went to school. After filing out of the car, we grabbed our backpacks and went our own ways. The twins and Zeke started their trek up to the main building, while Noah and I waited by the field. Mr. Miller showed up with his golf cart almost immediately. You boys should start walking up to the school. You need the exercise. Very funny. Noah snorted and still got on. He grabbed my arm when he saw me hesitate. Get on. Mr. Miller has a very dry sense of humor. As dry as the Sahara Desert. He started to drive the cart. It's not a joke that Jake is out of shape. My parents are going to call coach to explain. Cut him some slack, he just got out of the hospital. No joke. Why didn't you say something? I felt ashamed and tried to focus on the passing students. That's a bit insensitive to say to a mute. Noah replied. I was talking to you smartass. Also rude to call a kid bad names. Noah laughed. But, I'm not sure what happened to Jake. Mom and Dad said his birth mom was an evil witch. They definitely didn't say that, but that felt like an accurate description. Jake has been doing rehab just as recent as last week. So tell coach that we should have the trainer stop by practice to help out. Mr. Miller stopped the cart near the building. Hmm, that's a pretty good idea. Especially coming from you. Now get off. Noah rolled his eyes at his remark. See ya. At practice. Try not to be late this time, Mr. Miller. We both stepped off and headed for class. Noah glanced at me as we made our way to his locker. Do you know what I mean by trainer? I shrugged. The first thought that comes to mind are the trainers that make people get skinny. Our school has two athletic trainers and a couple assistants. But between mom and coach, I'm sure they'll get a real trainer to come on down. Usually they tape up athletes to help prevent injuries. They also supervise all games in case an injury happens so you'll see them around. But they also rehabilitate hurt athletes and plan programs to prevent injuries so I felt like that would help you. He can come up with a plan best fit to get you in shape without aggravating any old injuries. Isn't that great? I shrugged. I guess. It's not like I'm really injured right now. Just out of shape. And I get tired easily. Come on, let's see some more enthusiasm. Noah nudged me. I tried my best to give him a smile. Eh, slightly better. Don't make that in class though, you'll scare the other kids. No one would be scared of me. Not with Noah around. I knew Noah was nice and easy to get along with, but it really showed at school. Everyone always greeted him with a smile, wave, a hello, whichever way they could. No one specifically came up to him with me around so I kind of felt that he had worn them off. It was a nice thought, yet now, I felt even more ostracized. Only Noah spoke directly to me, along with the other Atkins. But also, I felt protected because I had nothing to say to my classmates. I might even feel more terrible if they try and talk to me and I couldn't say anything back. 
I don't know. It's a toss-up. Chapter 54 Trainer 2 You are listening to the novel at fametv.com. Chapter 54 Trainer 2 The day passed by without much hassle. Lunch was only me and Noah outside, his brothers must have stayed with their friends elsewhere. Noah just chatted away about baseball and his favorite players, filling up the silence that I leave. Occasionally he would require me to nod yes, or shake my head no, but it was very relaxing. I did start to wonder what his real friends think about him ditching them, just to hang out with me, but again, no one ever approached us. After lunch and a stop by his locker, he walked me to my math class and left me in the care of his twin brothers. Who, once again, had me fill out some problems for them. I did make sure to solve the problem step dot by it step just in case they'll have to study it before a test or something. They weren't very rambunctious in class, and they let me solve the problems in peace, so I really didn't mind. They even walked me to Noah's locker afterwards. When it came to practice, I got changed in the bathroom again. Noah looked at me funny, but he didn't say anything which I appreciate. The scars aren't crazy visible like they were early on, but I didn't need any more pity than I already get. When the whole team gathered in the dugout, the head coach demanded our attention. Boys. This is Jake Hollander. He's officially on the team. Great with the bat, but doesn't know much when it comes to the game. I expect all of you to lend a hand when needed. Don't crowd Jake and overwhelm him with nonsense. Introduce yourselves one at a time throughout the week. Wow. Mom must have called him and told him what's up. Look how nice he's being to you. Noah whispered. Noah. Ten laps after warm-up. Coach hollered. The guys all laughed, especially the twins. Noah frowned. But. No buts. Zeke came close. Talking back will be an extra five laps. You know talking while coach is talking is ten laps. Being close with Jake doesn't grant you exceptions. He glanced at me. If you don't understand something, you'll ask afterwards. I nodded urgently. Noah looked like he was going to start talking again so I grabbed his arm. He pouted, but was able to hold himself back. Zeke nodded, satisfied. He looked around the team. Jake is a special case, but we'll treat him as normal as possible. Coach agreed. After the trainer gets him up to speed and he can steadily keep up, he will practice at the same pace as everyone else. He jerked a thumb towards the field. Get going. Warm-ups. The team hustled out of the dugout. We did the same warm-up as yesterday so I didn't need to look to Noah for constant guidance. Which was good, because he was frowning and didn't talk at all. We went through the whole warm-up and passed the ball back and forth without talking. As soon as coach called us in, he took off to do his laps. I stood there, confused on what to do. It was weird that Noah would be so quiet. I didn't think he would take so much offense to Zeke and coach telling him to run. Jake. You joining us or did you want to run laps like Noah? Coach asked. He stood with the whole team staring at me. I dropped my glove and took off after Noah. I'd rather run two miles again than be left with a bunch of strangers. Contrary to my thought of catching up to him, he caught up to me on his second lap while I was still on the first. Damn. He runs fast. Jake. Noah slowed to my pace, not sounding out of breath at all. What are you doing? Is Zeke making you run laps too? I chose. Two. I gasped out, already tired from the short sprint. Idiot. Why would you do that? The trainer should be here soon, to come up with a program for you to follow. You. Were. Upset. I stuttered stepped, then fixed my stride length. Stupid. Not at you. I just don't like how Zeke bullies me sometimes. Him and coach. There were other players whispering too. They only like to come up with punishments almost every practice for me. Dad says it's because they want me to be a better player. But it still gets to me sometimes, you know. I nodded even though I was having trouble comprehending as I struggled on our laps. 
Noah became his usual talkative self as he ranted about how hard Zeke is on him. He didn't even make the twins run as much as him. He was able to keep ranting for the rest of the run, all the way back to the dugout. As we drank our water and I caught my breath, Mr. Miller approached us with an average-looking man by his side. Jake, this is Andrew Vishnevsky, the school's athletic trainer. You'll be under his care for now. Chapter 55 Trainer 3 You are listening to the novel at fametv.com. Chapter 55 Trainer 3 Andrew Vishnevsky looked younger than what I thought an athletic trainer would look like. He might have been right out of college or grad school or wherever trainers studied. He had dark hair, dark eyes behind glasses, and looked like he could just be a passerby off the street. He held out a hand, you can call me Drew. I looked at his hand. Then at Noah. Noah laughed. Just shake his hand. You really don't have to be so hesitant. Just give him a nice, firm handshake and say hello. He gave me a shoulder pat. I've got to go to the regular practice before they make me run some more. Then he ditched me. I ran ten laps with him. Mr. Miller laughed at my heart stricken expression. You can't use Noah as a shield all the time. Vishnevsky will take care of you until he deems you fit. He turned to leave as well. I sighed with dejection, then faced Drew. He still had his hand out, waiting patiently. I stretched out my arm and gave his hand a quick shake. Mary Atkins, your guardian has given me your medical records. He looked at me, expressionless. Do you have any aches or pains on a normal basis? I shook my head no. When you were running, did anything hurt? I started to shake my head no again, but then nodded. I pointed at my side, where my rib cage was. He pulled out a sheet of paper and looked it over. Then back at me. You have fractured your rib cage on that side, correct? I nodded. It's been so long since the original injury. I'm guessing there might be muscle damage or worst case, nerve damage. I flinched. I'll assign some exercises pertaining to the chest area so hopefully it'll help. Let's move to the grass area so I can see you try some exercises and drills. He pointed to some open space. I'll meet you over there. Grab your bat, glove and a baseball. I'm going to grab some tools. I ran around, gathering my gear. Drew was already setting up a speed ladder and mini hurdles six inches high when I returned. We'll start with some speed tests just to get a feel for where you're at. I timed your mile with Noah and I wasn't impressed. 15 minutes. I know Noah can run almost 2 miles in the amount of time. I also took note of your hard breathing and how you needed to drink quite a bit of water. Let me ask, how much water do you drink during the day? Drew spoke non-stop. I held up one finger. I have a water with my lunch. You're kidding. He deadpanned. What a joke. And you want to be an athlete. Not with that attitude. Athletes should drink half their weight in ounces of water. Since you weigh about 120 pounds, you should drink at least 60 ounces of water. Got it. I nodded. Agility ladder first. He commanded. I stood before it not sure what to do. Is this your first time? He asked after my awkward pause. I nodded. He sighed and started to show me some footwork skills. He did simples ones at first and started to record how fast I could do them. Then more complex ones, where my feet started to get tangled. I was already tired when we finished the ladder work, I couldn't imagine getting through the rest of this training session. I stumbled through the rest of his drills and somehow made it to the end. Coach came over and asked Drew how I did. Drew sighed and glanced where I was chugging water. I can get him in somewhat decent shape by the tournament. His hand-eye coordination is excellent. Speed is good if it's short and not consecutive. He just gets too tired too easily. Easy fix though. Just needs time and effort. Noah. Zeke. Come on over. The coach hollered. The both jogged over from the dugout, where the team was taking a water break. Jake will be spending his practices with Drew. 
warm-up and tossing will still be the same, then you'll report to Drew over here. He told me. He faced the Atkins. This weekend, I would like you guys to work on teaching him some routine plays between infielders. Then maybe try out some relay throws from outfield to cut off man to home plate. Next week we'll see where he's at before the tournament. Noah looked excited. Jake can play in the tournament. Coach glanced at me. If he meets my standard. Better to get some experience in the tournament before league play starts. Chapter 56 The Weekend 1 You are listening to the novel at fametv.com. Chapter 56 The Weekend 1 The rest of the week went according to plan. I settled into the Atkins routine of school, practice, home. At school, Mr. Miller would give Noah and I a ride to the buildings. We went through classes and ate lunch together. I would do the twins' math homework and class work with my own. At practice, I would follow Noah through warm-ups and we would toss the ball together, before I was sent to Drew. Drew was not my friend, I had decided. He pushed me through difficult workouts and made sure my whole body would be sore the following morning. After Friday's practice, I was convinced that practice may be for masochists. Pain was a reason that I was starting to have second thoughts on playing. I really couldn't tolerate much more. It'll be better when you're actually playing real baseball. Noah said to me in our room Friday evening. We had just finished our showers after coming home from practice. He stared at me as I laid on the floor of our room. Are you just going to be like this all night? Yes. I replied, trying not to move. Oh. That was such a clear yes. Are you choosing to talk, because moving your head hurts so much? He sat upright on his bed. Yes. Back-to-back one-worded answers. It's almost like we're having a real conversation. He looked down at my pathetic state. Even if it's at your expense, it's pretty nice. Will you use one-worded replies from here on out? Maybe. He jumped up excitedly. Wait here. I want to show the twins and Zeke. He ran out of our room. It wasn't like I was going anywhere. Every part of my body was so sore. He returned in a mere minute with the three. Watch this guys. Jake, are you still giving out one-word replies? Yes. Wow. Kyle squatted near my head. He must be dead tired. Too tired to move his head. And probably too tired to be scared. Dave squatted on the other side and poked my cheek. Say something else. Ouch. I wanted to move away, but it required too much effort. Normally I would hide away if the twins came too close, but the lack of strength played a big part in my lack of movement. Correlation. There's some math going on, I know it. Zeke leaned against the doorframe. Don't Billy a defenseless kid. His body is probably sore and stiff. Tomorrow we won't go out to practice. Oh man. Noah groaned. But how are we going to work on our plays? We'll do theoretical research first. We can pull up some clips and background for him to watch and learn. It's better if he sees what he's supposed to be doing first anyways. Stop poking Jake. He stopped talking baseball to scold the twins, who were taking turns poking my cheeks. But it's interesting. Dave kept poking. Jake never lets us get this close. Look. He doesn't even mind. I do. I told him, blandly. Even thinking about falling asleep. Hey, look. I got two words. Obviously this is working. Dave started to poke at a faster rate. Noah pushed him away. Leave him alone. Dave fell over from his squatting position but quickly got back up and tackled Noah. They started wrestling around me, but I didn't move. In fact, my eyes started to feel heavy. Boys. Dinner time. Mrs. Atkins hollered from downstairs. Kyle shot up and ran down first. Zeke walked away at his normal pace. Dave and Noah continued messing around. After a couple of minutes, Mr. Atkins appeared in the doorway. Your mother has called you. Get moving. 
they broke apart and Dave bolted out. Mr. Atkins looked at me, seeming more like a giant than usual. You okay, down there, Jake? No. I replied honestly. Everything hurts. He's sore from all the practice. Noah informed him. The trainer said it's hard to get muscles that haven't worked in a while, into shape. He's been lying on the floor since after his shower. He's even been giving one-worded replies. Watch this. Noah squatted near me. Do you want to eat or sleep? I closed my eyes. Sleep. Food will give you energy and fuel your body into recovering. Mr. Adkins informed me. Which means you won't be in as much pain tomorrow morning. My eyes burst open. Eat. He laughed and helped me off the floor. How'd you get him moving? Noah laughed. I thought he would give up dinner for sure. I told you, Jake has an aversion to pain. If it'll make the pain go away, he'll do it. Mr. Atkins helped me move down the hall. We should give him an ice bath then. Noah grinned at me. Ice bath. What did that mean? Chapter 57 The Weekend 2 You are listening to the novel at fametv.com. Chapter 57 The Weekend 2 His dad agreed that we would try the ice bath treatment after dinner. Noah told his brothers and they all agreed that it was a good idea because I'll feel way better tomorrow. Maybe even well enough to try and do some plays with Noah. But at the sight of the twins exchanging smirks, I started to feel anxious. With good reason apparently. After dinner, Noah's dad filled the hallway bath with cold water, then dumped two buckets of ice. Noah gave me a bathing suit to change into, which I found weird since it's a bath. I kept my teeth dot shirt on as well, just in case. When I walked back towards the bathroom, Noah was sitting on the sink counter so the twins could squeeze in, making me more suspicious. I put my hand in first and shivered. So, cold. No wimping out now, Jakey. Dave taunted. Dad put so much effort in bringing up the ice, so you can't waste it. I glanced back at them and frowned. Dave was teasing, Kyle had a phone out and pointed at me, and Noah was just swinging his legs, nonchalant about it all. I poked Noah's leg and then pointed at Kyle. He's filming your first ice bath experience. Noah grinned at me. It's a rite of passage. They filmed mine too. Dad also has recordings of theirs so it's all fair. Just grin and bear with it. I didn't grin. I kept my frown firmly in place and even made sure the camera saw it. I went back to the tub and stepped inside, letting the water go up almost to my knees. Start with getting your lower body in. Then once you adjust, you can slide down to allow your upper body to soak as well. I heard Zeke say from the hallway. Great. Even he showed up for the show. I braced myself, then quickly sat down so my whole lower body would be in the ice bath. I wasn't feeling very tight and sore in my lower half now, in fact I was hardly feeling anything. Jake E. Smile. Kyle squatted and got close. I took a page out of Noah's playbook and rolled my eyes. I don't think it had the same effect with all my shivering. Now submerge. Zeke instructed, still in the hallway. You only have to stay in between 6 and 8 minutes. I nodded, not so much to him, but to encourage myself. This will help my pain. I scooted down and lowered everything but my head in the bath. That's about two songs. Dave laughed. I don't know if he'll be able to last. Noah looked at me. Then back at Dave. I bet he lasts the whole eight minutes. On Sunday you pay for the cages. Dave's face twitched. For everyone. Or just you. Just for me and Jake. Noah winked at me. It's okay, if you don't want to take the bet. You did lose last time. In fact, you still owe ten laps. Fine. I'll bet he won't last for minutes. But you have to take the ten laps back and pay for my cage play. Sure. Noah shrugged. He looked at Kyle. You want in. Kyle kept his phone focused on me, still recording. 
No way. This week without dessert has been the worst. Also, I feel like Jake has great odds. He's only shivering. Not crying aloud like you losers. Bro, you didn't even last 30 seconds. Dave shot back. He looked as I soaked in the ice bath. It's weird that he isn't even whimpering though. Maybe he really is a robot. Dad told him this technique would make the pain go away. And Jake hates pain. Noah gave me a thumbs up. He'll stick with it as long as he has to, to make the pain go away. I nodded. What? Dave glared at Noah. That basically means that you hustled me. Noah shrugged. Prove it. Their bickering went on the whole time as I shivered in the ice-cold water. Finally, Kyle said it's been over eight minutes and I slowly stood up and stepped out of the tub. Dave grumbled before stomping away. Noah tossed me a towel and I started to dry off. Kyle stopped recording and started to watch the playback. This isn't as entertaining as ours. You sure did that like a pro. Have you really never done this before? I snorted. Who would ever do this multiple times? I better feel back to normal tomorrow or I'm going to be severely upset with Noah. Chapter 58 The Weekend 3 You are listening to the novel at fametv.com. Chapter 58 The Weekend 3 Saturday morning came and brought the expected results. I wasn't as stiff as a board and I even felt rejuvenated. At breakfast Noah and Zeke told their parents what we had planned. I would spend the morning watching videos and tutorial clips they would pull up on their smart TV in the living room. Then after lunch we would practice in real life at the park. Their parents didn't have any disagreements, especially considering they had houses to show for potential clients and would be gone until dinner. Their only concern was the twins. Idle hands are the devil's workshop. Mrs. Atkins worried. I tilted my head in confusion. It's from the Bible. Noah told me. It basically means one who is not occupied is likely to do evil things and get into trouble. I nodded. After one week in this house, I believe it. The twins reminded me of the cartoon of the Tasmania Devil. Always destroying what was in front of them and causing havoc. I'll text Garrett to invite them over for pitching practice. Zeke replied. Will you? That would be great. She gave him two thumbs up. Noah laughed at his mom as she looked dorky. Even I stifled a laugh. She looked at us. And you two troublemakers, be good for Zeke. I don't want a replay of last weekend. Noah rolled his eyes. Don't worry mom. We won't go to the cages until tomorrow. She put a hand to her head, exasperated. That's supposed to make me feel better. Zeke will be with them tomorrow, honey. Mr. Atkins tried to soothe her. Plus I heard Dave is paying for Noah and Jake, which means extra supervision. She squinted at him. Why is Dave paying for them? He wouldn't do something like that. He lost a bet with Noah and Jake during the ice bath. He told her. Her eyes immediately swung back to us. Another bet. Noah, this is getting out of hand. I'm seriously concerned that you might have a gambling problem. Noah shrugged. It's only a problem if you're losing. I burst out laughing. What a typical reply from Noah, the gambling addict. Noah started to laugh with me. Sorry mom. That was too funny. I'll cool it on the gambling, I swear. Mrs. Atkins looked at us laughing. Well, I'll let it slide for now. Her and Mr. Atkins said their goodbyes and left in their respective cars. Noah wiggles his eyebrows. I didn't say anything about hustling though. I shook my head at the thought. What a scam artist. A con man. Nah. Gambler still fits best. He's taking another gamble that his mom won't kill him when she finds out that he lied. If you're done eating breakfast, Dump your dishes in the sink and move to the living room. Zeke stood up. I'm going to wake the twins and send them to Garrett's. We went our separate ways. Zeke up the stairs to deal with the twins. And we did what we were told, 
dumping the dirty dishes in the sink and going to the living room. Noah turned on the TV as we slouched on the couch, getting comfy. He grabbed an iPad and started to pull up tutorials on YouTube. We'll start with the basic of the basics. Positioning. Where should you stand and why? We started to watch the video that may have been for elementary school kids. There was a lot to take in. Depending what kind of batter was up to bat, who was on base and where, I would have many options that I could take. I don't know if I'll be able to keep it all straight. Why aren't you taking notes? Zeke frowned when he walked in half an hour later. There's no way you'll be able to simply memorize every possibility. Now he tells me. I looked at Noah, wondering why he didn't say anything. He looked at me sheepishly. I didn't even think about taking notes. This is mostly common sense to me at this point. Of course. Since he's played for years. I ran up to our room and grabbed one of my school notebooks with a pencil. When I came back to the living room, Zeke had commandeered the iPad from Noah. He was creating a playlist of videos I needed to watch and study. I looked at the total time as it started to add up to over an hour. Then two. Then three. Zeke was ruthless. He glanced at me. Make sure you pay careful attention. I'll quiz you at the park this afternoon. Every wrong answer will equal a lap. Correction. Zeke was merciless. Chapter 59 The Weekend 4 You are listening to the novel at fametv.com. Chapter 59 The Weekend 4 We, legitimately, watched baseball videos all morning. And not the fun kind. All of it was informative or a tutorial on what to do for each situational play. Noah had briefly gone over situational plays with me before my tryout, but we ended up not having to go over it since my batting impressed everyone. By lunchtime, I had wrote down five pages of notes with an attempt at some diagrams for reference. Safe to say, I've retained at least half of it. Maybe. I looked over my notes during lunch and on the way to the park, trying to make sure I'll pass the test Zeke wants to throw at me. Their neighborhood park was bigger than what I had expected. It had a playground, soccer field, and a baseball field. We lugged our gear on over and placed it near home plate. Then Zeke had us do the same warm-up as always, even though we weren't doing a full practice. Surprisingly the twins showed up with Garrett and they joined our warm-up. What are they doing here? Noah asked Zeke. In situational plays we need extra players. Someone to hit the ball to Jake. Someone to play first. You'll play short. Depending on what I want to do, we'll need those guys to stand in for real players. Zeke informed us. Hey. Dave yelled out. You basically just called us lackeys. And your point. Zeke continued the warm-up without stopping. Is this really the way you treat your younger brother, who's doing you a favor? You're doing the team a favor. Not me personally. Take it up with coach. Zeke remained expressionless as always. We wrapped up the warm-up and got our gloves. Zeke took up a bat instead and dragged a bucket of balls closer to himself. I'll hit the balls since I have the best control. No one refuted. Noah to short. Jake to second. Garrett, you'll play first. Dave to right field and Kyle will be a catcher. Wouldn't Garrett in the outfield be a better choice since plays it more? Dave disagreed. I'm left dot handed. Garrett made a face. It would only make sense if it was left field. Glove side closest to the foul line and whatnot. It's just practice. Dave put his hands on his head. I don't want to go all the way out there and shag balls. Make Kyle do it instead. Zeke's eyes cut through him, making me feel nervous for Dave. Zeke looked like he was about to thrash him. Fine. Kyle does have the stronger arm. It would only make more sense to send him. Kyle smirked at Dave. You're right. I'll do it. Since I have a stronger arm. He jogged to the grass and found a good spot to stand. Zeke ignored Dave's look of displeasure. Since you're catcher, you're responsible for handing me a ball. And making sure the rest make it back into the bucket. 
Dave grumbled and took a spot next to the bucket. He gave a ball to Zeke. Zeke looked at me. I'll be calling out the situation before I send the ball to you. You field accordingly. Every wrong one will equal a lap, which you'll run on Monday. I nodded nervously and got set. No outs. Zeke smacked a light grounder my way. I quickly fielded it to Garrett who waited at first patiently. Zeke nodded, satisfied. Simple and quick. Next. One out, runner on first. He sent me another grounder towards my right hand. I bare-handed it, and lightly tossed it to Noah, who was waiting on second base, then he fired it to Garrett on first. Garrett whistled. Not bad. Already attempting bare hands. You also paired with Noah very nicely. Wrong. Zeke shut down Garrett's compliments with one word. That'll be a lap. What? Why? Noah looked as upset as I felt. That was my first real attempt at a bare hand and Zeke isn't even giving us credit as a pass. I said runner on first. He stressed. That could possibly mean he's staying close to the base. Maybe without a lead. The batter could also be a slow runner. It would have been a safer play if you backhanded with your glove to ensure it didn't get past you. We don't need fancy and nice-looking plays. We want safe plays that'll win games. My jaw dropped. Chapter 60 The Weekend 5 You are listening to the novel at fametv.com. Chapter 60 The Weekend 5 I looked at Noah for help. Noah was already on it though. How are we supposed to know that about your imaginary runners if you don't say so beforehand? You'll have to observe the situation beforehand. What does that even mean? Noah rolled his eyes. The runners aren't real. We can't see them. Can't judge them. Can't see if they're leading off or not. I vote that Jake doesn't have to run the lap. My savior. Zeke glanced at Garrett. He shrugged. Just a bit unfair. I'd let it slide until coach puts him in a game, but then double the punishment then. He sent me a thousand megawatt smile, yet it felt anything but friendly. He must be bitter about losing to you last Monday. Noah mumbled to me. I nodded in agreement. Garrett didn't seem like an evil guy, but looks can be really deceiving. Okay. In this upcoming tournament, when you play, for every error you commit, you'll have to run a mile the following practice. And sometimes you get what exactly is advertised. Zeke looked mean and scary, and his words definitely confirmed initial impressions. Isn't that too much? Noah pouted. Sounds like you're abusing your power. Zeke smiled at Noah. Making us both shiver. If that's what you think, then as his mentor you'll help him run his laps. Half a mile for each of you for each error. I don't know about Noah, but I felt better about it. We can discuss more with coach during practice. Zeke added. Let's get back to fielding now. Any more disagreements and you'll be running home. Noah and I got back into our spots, without argument. Next play. Runner on first and second. No outs. He smacked a hard grounder to Noah's right side. He dove, using his glove on the backside, then used that momentum to keep turning right, throwing me the ball. I caught it while touching second and quickly threw to first. I smiled at Noah and gave him a thumbs up, even thinking about saying something about how well he fielded that. Only, Zeke spoke first. Fail. We looked at him, confused on what we missed now. He looked at me, you're going to get wiped if you play like that. I looked at Noah for translation, finding him looking at me already. He nodded. You can't hang on the bag like that Jake. The runner will come in hard, spikes aiming at your ankles to ruin your throw to first. Not only does your throw have to be quick, your feet has to move as well. I sighed, but nodded. I could understand that. Hit one out here already. I'm getting bored. Kyle complained from afar as Noah was busy teaching me and Zeke was busy scolding us. Zeke grabbed a new ball and got ready. Runner on second. The score is tied at zero bottom of the seventh. 
It's a single to left field. Jake, you're the cutoff man. Where do you throw? I pointed at home. We have to defend against the run. High school baseball only has seven innings so if the opposite team scores in the bottom of the seventh, we lose. He nodded. Then he sent a line drive single between me and Garrett to Kyle. Kyle caught it off the bounce and threw a bullet to me like it could have been him pitching. I caught it, then threw to Dave. Dave caught it off a bounce. He looked at me on the edge of the infield. Yo. You may be a batting genius, but you have really weak arms. I turned red with embarrassment. He's only a freshman. He can't be good at everything. Noah defended. Jake hasn't even practiced fielding so I think he's doing great. No. Zeke stayed firmly. Dave has a point. Jake can't throw very far. We'll have to convert Julian into the cutoff man for this side. He thought for a minute. Julian will go to the grass as the cutoff guy, Jake, you'll have to immediately go cover first base just in case. I nodded, actually liking this plan. This is just a temporary solution. Zeke started me down. We don't want someone useless on the field that we have to constantly accommodate. Hey. Too far. Jake will make it up for it with his bat. Noah glared at Zeke. Zeke quirked an eyebrow. We'll see.